Hi, this is Richard Hicks, founder and principal consultant of Richard M. Hicks Consulting, where we specialize in enterprise mobility and security infrastructure. In this video, I want to talk about load balancing Ike v2 for client-based VPN connections. When a client attempts to establish a VPN connection using Ike v2, the initial connection takes place over UDP port 500. As part of the connection establishment process, the client and server will perform NAT detection. If no NAT is detected, communication takes place normally using IPsec over IP protocol 50. However, if one or both of the peers are behind a NAT, the client will then encapsulate its IPsec traffic in UDP using port 4500. Because of this, load balancing IKE v2 presents some unique challenges. Specifically, we need to ensure that both the UDP 500 and 4500 traffic are delivered to the same backend VPN server. Here's a visual representation of the Ike v2 connection establishment process. The VPN client sends its initial request using UDP port 500. The load balancer forwards this request to one of the backend VPN servers. If a NAT is detected, the client then switches to UDP port 4500. Ideally, the load balancer will forward this request to the same backend VPN server. However, there's no guarantee of this, and if the load balancer forwards the UDP 4500 traffic to a different server, the connection will fail. To address this challenge using the Kemp Loadmaster Load Balancer, we'll enable a feature called Port Following. Let's look at how that's configured. So here we are in the web user interface for the Kemp Loadmaster Load Balancer. I've expanded virtual services, I've clicked add new, and I'm going to create my first virtual service. So I'm going to go ahead and provide an IPv4 address for this. We'll specify the port as port 500, and we'll provide a name. Finally, select UDP as the protocol, and click add this virtual service. We'll add our real servers by clicking Add New and providing the IP addresses of the real servers. Now we'll go back and repeat this process for UDP port 4500. So now that we've created both the virtual services for UDP port 500 and 4500, now we need to enable port following. So let's go to the first virtual service and choose Modify. And we're going to uncheck the option to use Layer 4. We'll choose our persistence options, and of course we'll just use source IP address. You can set the timeout method and the scheduling method uh, as to your particular requirements and then we'll click uh, back and repeat that process for port 4500. Now once that's complete, we'll go back to the first service and under advanced properties you'll see we have something here called port following. So now we will select the virtual IP address that corresponds to the UDP port 4500 and we'll also do the same on the port 4500 service. And so that's it. Port following is enabled. That meaning that any time a request coming in on UDP port 500, that 4500 request will also be sent to the same backend server. 
If you'd like to learn more about Always On VPN as well as other mobility and security solutions, visit my website at directaccess.richardhicks.com.